Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you all for uh, joining us on this cool, balmy day <laughs> in Washington, D.C. Uh, I want to thank uh, all of my colleagues, including Senator Durbin, who's on approach, Senators Booker, Cortez Masto, Lujan, and Markey, as well as Representatives Baragan and Jaya Paul, uh, and especially thank all the leaders uh, from uh, Forward U.S., Unidos U.S., American Families United, CASA, and all the advocates, all the allies, all the uh, immigrants lifting up their voices here today. We know that the last several months uh, have uh, been difficult. We know that there have been, uh, quote unquote, bipartisan negotiations on a border <coughs> safety and security plan. And sadly, we know that the result of those negotiations forgot the core values of who we are as a nation of immigrants. We saw proposals come forward that failed to provide relief for a single dreamer, for a single farm worker, for a single long-term resident of the United States that happens to be undocumented. <coughs> What's worse, we've seen the leader of the Republican Party promise mass deportations if he's reelected as President of the United States. So it's with that context that we think about and respond to reports that the Biden administration is considering a number of executive actions on border security and immigration. And so our message to the president today is this. We should not fear immigration as a subject matter. We should lean into it because we recognize the value that all immigrants, including undocumented immigrants like dreamers, like farm workers, and immigrant essential workers bring to communities and bring to our country each and every day. Let's recognize and honor that immigrants aren't just part of the workforce that powers our economy. Immigrants are tremendous entrepreneurs. And we're also powerful consumers with billions of dollars in spending power, which, by the way, leads to tremendous revenues for the federal government in terms of our tax base and state and local governments as well. And I'm proud to uh, not just represent California, but tout California as an Exhibit A. We're not just home to the most populous, uh, we're not just the most populous state in the nation, the most diverse state in the nation, home to more immigrants, documented and undocumented, than any state in the nation. California is also the largest economy of any state in the nation. Not despite immigrants, but because of the contributions of immigrants in all these categories. And yet, because of Congress's inaction, millions of families with undocumented loved ones continue to face uncertainty each and every day. And this is wrong. We know that Congress has an important role to play. And we'll continue to work with our Republican colleagues when they're ready to come back to the negotiation table. But in the meantime, yes, Mr. President, we welcome steps to protect long-term undocumented populations in our communities. What we firmly reject is failed Trump-era policies aimed at banning asylum and moving us backwards. So, Mr. President, we know what's in your heart. Let's reject the extremist messaging vilifying immigrants. Let's embrace our values as a nation of immigrants and provide relief for the long-term residents of the United States. And no, not just because it's morally the right thing to do, and it is, but because it's in our country's best interest. And before I hand it off to the next speaker, let me just offer a few words in Spanish as well. Hoy estamos aquí con uh, un mensaje muy simple, pero poderoso. 
y los acompaño no solo como, solo como senador federal, pero como hijo orgulloso de inmigrantes. Estamos aquí para pedirle al presidente Biden que tome acción ejecutiva para proteger a los inmigrantes indocumentados que llevan años esperando una reforma migratoria en este país. A pesar de todo que los inmigrantes aportan a nuestra economía, hemos visto propuestas migratorias en los últimos meses que han dejado atrás a estas comunidades. Es inaceptable. Por eso estamos exigiendo que el presidente use su poder ejecutivo para ofrecerle alivio a estas comunidades, no solo porque es lo correcto, pero porque es en el interés de nuestro país. Muchísimas gracias.